Front steps are finished, as finished as they are for right now. I may come back to some boat finishing. The trusses are? All the way up. All the way up. So we are hot and sweaty because it's about five o'clock and we've been doing trusses all day. But- They're done. They're done. Now I have to brace them. We have a long list of other things, but that's okay because it's starting to get stormy. So we've come inside to work in here and we're gonna do some shelves. We're gonna show you how to take some basic lumber and cutouts and do some open shelving. We can honestly say this light fixture is not a fan favorite. It's okay because I also don't love it. We're gonna leave it up there for right now, but we are planning on switching it out for this. We're gonna make our own farmhouse gooseneck light fixture in the next video or so. You're gonna find out how we do that with this existing shade. And this will not go to waste. We'll wind up using it probably in my parents' bathroom. So all's end well, all's what? All's well that ends well. That's what it is. Jamie was out shopping with her mom this morning and they hit up IFA, which is a local feed store. They had some sod for the first time this year, so she just had them put a whole pallet in the back of my half ton truck. She's trying to break my truck. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're laying this out this morning quick before it dries out. Zeb's gonna cut this out with a jig. We're gonna use this antique corbel as a pattern. We're not gonna do the fancy little cutouts inside because ain't nobody got time for that. These will be the supports for the shelves and they will match the stove a little bit because we use the top portion right here to do the stove corbels up on top on the shelf. So you don't waste wood, you just flip it and cut out the other side. So I chose this corbel design because it will match the hood which is close by but also because it's kind of skinny and not super fat. I don't wanna take up a lot of space that I will be using to display things on the shelves. We're starting this far down on the board because this side here has a split on it and then there's this big knot that I want to avoid, but I don't want to waste the wood, so we'll just start about right here and then work our way down the board. And I think I need four of these. I'm just gonna hand cut them. Next step, I'm gonna be using 220 on my orbital just to smooth it out and go over the edges a little. Time for a little dark and rapid in case I decide to distress these. I haven't decided yet, but it's all right. We'll be ready either way. Next coat is just a dirty, sloppy coat of Sweetie Jane. Are you sanding most of that off? Um, well, I'm probably just gonna paint over it and then sand it. I'm hoping we get some chips and cracks. We'll get the heat gun out here in a minute. And we'll make these look a little bit eight. So I went one part water to one part milk paint. We did not have the immersion blender, so there's a little chunks, but I'm okay with that because when you have chippy old paint, chunks are part of the game. I used my drill. Yeah, if you want smooth milk paint, use an immersion blender. So we're about to run Redrick to uh, football practice, so I've got to get the okay on the shelf placing going. All right, so measure to 18 inches. That's about typical of the bottom of upper cabinet, 16 to 18 inches. I feel Whoops. like that's uh, 18 inches. 18 at? inches as this, this right here. Okay, so do you want them higher? No, hold on. So this line right there. That's good, because we're just going to do two. Yeah. Because we don't want them like hanging on the ceiling. We also don't want to hide all that pretty marble. No, absolutely not. So 18 inches is great. We went with, we've got 48 inches across all total, so we've gone with a 40 inch shelf. So it gives us a good amount of space. And we'll put the core bowls about what? Like an inch and a half from the edge? Yeah, uh, well, that's the trick. I might need to find a stud for those. I do have anchors to put in there. Depends on how heavy you want to weigh these down. Well, I'm going to go to football practice, you figure that out. Okay. May the force be with you. All right. 
still need to do a few things like trim work and caulk and things like that around this kitchen and counter, but it's starting to come together. We're kind of committing to these. It's a good thing we have some spare tiles in case we ever change our mind down the road. But this is a special masonry bit and it's designed for tile. It'll cut marble, several types of stone, concrete, things like that. So I'm going in right here. whole point was to not break the tile and it did a good job. Next step is a wall anchor. So what that's going to do is that's going to go in there and then as the screw goes in that spreads out and that'll hold everything in there nice and tight. Throwing on some beadboard and hopefully the chippy underneath carries through we'll see. So the island is done very similar to this. We just haven't really distressed it heavily yet, but there is the same milk paint underneath, and then we beadboard it over the top with the DIY paint. So Jamie's using the heat gun because she's trying to force it to crackle. It might not crackle right this second, but I'm gonna use some water and wet distress. We'll see what happens. We'll get some. I'll make it do. Some DIY white wax going on here. Tone down the uh, Sweetie Jane, but look at that. It's already like chippy and crackly. It's good. Honestly, on shelving like this, you could probably leave it unwaxed if you wanted to, but since it's going in the kitchen, it's bound to get grease and something splashed on it. Yeah, it's fine. If there's any ever damage to it, I'll just touch it up and add some more clear wax. That's the glory of painted surface surfaces. Painted surfaces, if your kids ruin them, you can fix them. I know how. Now that I'm done white waxing, I'm just gonna darken decrepit these shelves. I'm not worried about perfection. I might even whitewash them to lighten them up. Don't want them to get too dark. I'm gonna wipe it back off. These are 3 8 wood plugs. They will fill that hole nicely. And a mallet won't really fit down into these curves very well, so I'm just gonna use the back of a screwdriver. Get those nice and flush, and then I'll let Jamie come over here and work her chippy paint magic on those little plugs. I'll probably just paint them white. Yeah, but you can work the paint and white magic, right? I got so much magic. We've got the dark and decrepit. Four parts water to one part beadboard, not an exact science. Put this on here. Because it's water-based and dark and decrepit is water-based, if you don't let the dark and decrepit dry all the way, you can kind of get it to blend. Watch, we'll put some water on here. And then the magic of the paper towel. So I'm just blending together the beadboard that's been watered down with a dark and decrepit. And it kind of gives it a whitewashed aged effect. Make sure you're wiping with the grain so you don't get any weird smears. Hopefully the height that the shelves are right. If they're not, we're going to pretend that they are perfect. I actually think that's great. And I'm not just saying that because we've already drilled. Because we're stuck with it? Yeah. The question remains, how do we the next shelf. So I think, I don't think 18 inches, I think that would be too much. I think about, what do you think about, like right here for the top of the next one. All right, height of the shelf. 
I'm thinking right there. that right there looks good. Yeah, that's perfect. Because that puts it fairly even spacing from the top of the window, or from the bottom of the window, and from the top of the window. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. It's almost looking like a kitchen. Almost. Now we just need a faucet and we need to fix the light. A faucet and Episode. light and flooring. Episode 552 of just that side of the kitchen. Hey, and you know what? This has been a lot of work. <laughs>